Let's go into 8.4, which is compound interest. So we are going to learn the formulas, calculate the present value, and understand and compute effective annual yield. So some review skills are with rounding. So rounding to the nearest thousands with the TH at the end. So it's behind the decimal. It is one, two, three, four numbers behind the decimal. So here's the four numbers behind. Tenths, hundreds, thousands. Oh no, that was 10,000, so it's six. And so it's the eight that determines if it goes up or stays the same. So it's 0.71, one. that eight is gonna make the six go up. Convert percent to a decimal. So one way you could do that is DP. So, Decimal to percent. If you're going decimal to percent, you move it two places to the right. From percent to decimal, we move two places to the left. So since we're converting from percent to decimal, percent to decimal, I'm going to go right or left. One, two, point zero, zero, nine. If I want to convert from decimal to percent, I'm going to go right. One, two. 30%. Compound interest is interest computed on the original principal as well as any accumulated interest. To calculate the compound interest paid once a year, we use this formula. Where we have A is our future value, P is principal amount or present value, R is your rate as a decimal, and T is time in years. Let's say we have this example where we have 2,000 is our principal amount, a rate of 1.6, so 1.612, 1 .016 will be our rate, and we want to find, after three years, what is the amount of money in the account, so T is 3. So remember our formula. So it's going to be 2,000, 1 plus 0 0.016 to the T, 3. Okay. Okay, so that is the amount, 2,000 minus 7. We want interest earned is part B. So what we can do is we can find the interest by taking the amount in the account minus what we put in originally. So we do 2,000 minus 2,097.54. Or vice versa. You get the idea. $97.54. I should have written backwards. So this is the amount of interest. Okay. Compound interest, um, so if it's just compounded once, so it says compounded once a year, we would use this formula. But if it's compounded periodically, then we need to know how many times it's compounded, and that's going to be N. So N is how many times it's going to be compounded per year. So here's our formula. So it's almost the same thing. The only thing that we're changing is we're dividing the rate by n, and then we're multiplying time by our n. We're still going to find a. p is our principal, which is our present value. We um, deposit seven thousand five hundred in the account at the rate of one point two. So let's move our decimal over. Compounded monthly. So how many times per year is it compounded? Then? Would be 12. Um, how much money will be in the account after five years? So T is five. So plug into the formula. I like to just write it down. Okay. And Mm 
Okay. So you can simplify it or you can put it on like that. Um, if you have the calculator like I have, you want to do like this. Um, you can put it in parentheses and put that fraction in. Or if you have the update, it's alpha y equals. And you're able to come up with the fraction. It was alpha y equals to get that fraction in. And then you always have to arrow over to get out of it. Close your parentheses and then do the exponent of 12 times 5 or 60. We gotta round up. That's the amount. So if you don't have a calculator like this, it will take you a little bit more work. You're going to have to simplify things. So like 0 0.012 divided by 12. Um, so then you could do the 7,500. Add that to 1. You could put 1.001. 12 times 5 is 60. So if you need to simplify it before you put in the calculator, you can. If you have one of these calculators, you can put it all in at one time. Okay, so interest would be anything over the 7,500. So I'm going to do 7,500. Well, I'm going to do how much I have. 7,963.54 minus 7,500. 463.54 is the amount of interest there. Okay, there are times that the bank will continuously compound it. Um, and there is a different formula for that. It is this. A equals P, and that's an E to the RT. So E on this calculator is right there. E, I have to do second LN to get it. And you have E raised to a power. Okay, so we have this for compounding periods per year, and then this formula for continuous compounding. So there is a difference there. Okay, so choosing between investments, find the accumulated value for an investment of $8,000 for six years at an interest rate of 2.5 if the money is all these different ways of being compounded. So we do have P is uh, 8,000, T is 6, the rate is 2.5, so we move it over. And then we're going to have different values for N because it's compounded differently, semi annually. So um, that is twice a year. I like a semi-annual cell. They have two huge cells in a year. So I'm going to rewrite my formula up here. So I don't have to keep on turning my page back. Okay. So then I'm going to plug it in. So 8,000. 1 plus 0.025 over 2. Raised to the n t. So we can put that directly into the calculator. You can simplify it before. And two times six is twelve. I could go ahead and simplify that. Make sure you know how to put this in your calculator. Make sure you know what each value represents and how we're using that formula. So for semi-annually, it's 9,286. Okay. Right, quarterly, so this can be the same formula except in quarterly, there are four quarters. So then same exact equation. The only thing that's changing is the end value. So actually, I'm going to go up here. The calculator is really helpful in that. I can just change this. 4 times 6 is 24. So it did go up. Not much, but it went up. Enough. Three books. 
get some change. Almost four. Okay. Next one, compounded monthly. So n is 12. Okay. And 12. 12 times 6. 12 times 6 is 72. So I'm going to go up, bring it down. There we go. Okay. And then the last one is compounded continuously. So that's that other formula. P E R T. P eight thousand. P to the right point oh two five times six. You gotta do second that. L in to get the little E. Zero to power one six. One two nine four point six seven. Okay. Okay. Planning for the future with compound interest. So we are going to instead of being given the present value or the principal, we're going to be given the account, the amount that we want. So let's say you want to have a million dollars by the time you are 65 years old, then you, you could use a formula like this. Okay, so A is the um, amount that you want. Uh, T is time, N is how much it's compounded, exactly what we've been doing. Okay, so how much should be deposited in the account today if it earns 6% compounded semi-annually? It will accumulate 20000 in five years. So 20000 divided by, because it's A, um, 1 plus the rate, 0 0.06, because we move it over two places, over semi-annually means 2, and then 2 times a year. Or years. So you put that into the calculator. So I'm going to put it in, and if you have this calculator, it's uh, pretty simple to do. Don't, you're going to have to simplify things before you put it into the calculator. This is how you do it. Oh, you know what? I put on an extra name there. Okay. Raise to the 2 times 5 is 10. So 14881 So in order to have $20,000 in 5 years, she should invest fourteen thousand eighty-eight eight hundred and eighty-one point eighty-eight. Round just to the nearest cent. So you always want to round this up one because if you don't go, if you like put eighty-seven, even if this is like a two back there, um, you wouldn't have exactly twenty thousand, just be a little bit under. So you have to be careful with that. So here. Um, we are going to talk about effective annual yield if the interest is compounded semi-annually. So if the effective annual yield is simple interest, is a simple interest rate that produces the same amount of money in an account at the end of one year as when the account is subject to compound interest at, this, at a stated rate. So we use this function where it's y is going to be a rate. We can write it as a percent. It'll be written as a decimal whenever it comes out, though. You can move it over. N is how many times it's compounded. So if we have this one. We deposit 40000 in an account that pays 4% interest compounded monthly. Use future value after one year. 
So we are going to do that formula of uh, 4,000 one plus 0.045 by 12 over, or to the 12 times one. So when we put that in, one plus point three four twelve raised to the oh raised to the twelve. Okay, so that would be the amount. Okay, use the future value formula to find the simple interest. Uh, for the effective annual yield. So this is going to find what interest rate we would need to have as simple interest in order to earn the same amount but compounded. So it's an equivalent. 1 minus the rate, 0.04, over um, N. How many times is it? It's monthly, so it's 12. And then the end, 12, and then minus one. Oh, this is a plus. So we want to do one plus, we put in the fraction, 0. 0.04 over 12. Close it, raised to the 12th power, subtract one. So it comes out to be. Point zero four zero seven. I'm going to move it over one, two. So it's four point oh seven percent or four point one. So you just have to pay attention to what decimal place it wants you to go to to determine that. So if it said to the tenth hundredth place, you do that. If it says tenths place, you would do four point one. So just be careful with that. Okay. Um, let's look at it. And the account has a rate of 6.5, so let's move it over, 0 0.065. Finding effective annual yield if the interest is compounded semi-annually. So, so yield is 1 plus the rate, 0 0.065, over n, which is 2, raised to the same power, minus 1. I'm going to just go in here and change it. So, 0 0.06605. Oh, 0 0.06 actually. So let's go 1, 2, 6.6. 6. And if I go to this one, 6.61%. All right, and then this last um, slide just gives you all of the formulas all in one. So go ahead and complete your assignment.